What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. I'll shift back with you, and today we're taking a little more of an in-depth look and reviewing while also answering the question of is it worth your money to purchase this early access version of Islands of Nine? Well, we're not going to get too far into it. I just want to give you a brief overview to start things off. It is a Battle Royale game, as I'm sure most of you already know, or at least have some idea, but the difference is this is a sci-fi futuristic setting that this Battle Royale takes place in where you drop into the dome of a certain uh, combat arena in the nine and well you could be going up against 50 players in a uh, area that is very limited compared to a lot of battle royales a very small circle in comparative to uh, PUBG or even Fortnite and the combat is all very very quick including the time to kill you can see you can find weapons attachments armor pieces across the world on different spawn spots and that's how fast the time to kill is although granted that was a headshot but regardless the time to kill is very quick it is a very skill based battle royale but the thing about it that differs from the more tactical nature of PUBG and the more crazed kind of fun loving attitude of Fortnite is that this game is more of the hardcore shooter's dream of Battle Royale. You're not going to get shot from 400 meters away, at least not typically. And the fights are up close and personal. It comes down to, are you a pure aimer? Can you hit the shot or can't you? Of course, positioning does play a factor in this game. But for the most part, it comes down to outgunning your opponent. And I know a lot of my friends who are from a more traditional FPS standpoint who have tried this game absolutely adore it because of that simple fact that it comes down to if you can aim and you have the skill to outgun your opponent, you will find success. Now, that being said, there are a lot of technical and very difficult aspects of this game besides just the aiming and the time to kill that we'll get into later as you just kind of get a little bit of a teaser of some gunplay to go. At the moment, there are three different types of pistols if you include the starter, the deagle, and then the elite pistol. Three different iterations of assault rifles two different submachine guns and then a sniper rifle and then on the home screen you can kind of see all of that listed there as far as what you can do to customize your character and your loadouts there is a store yes there is a little bit of a paid price but you do generate in-game currency rather quickly and you can buy either weapon cosmetic chests or character cosmetic chests for about a price of about three thousand in-game currency which is about Oh, I don't know, four or five games worth it. If you don't do all that well, you can get these crates. They're not hard to get. That's what I'm trying to say. Though rare, be uh, range between legendary and common items. I found myself a wonderful common item in my first roll. This kind of cobalt blue talon common skin. It's pretty nifty, pretty nifty. Can't say I uh, mind it so much. Also in there, of course, you can see the weapon slots. This is where you go to equip all of those things. And then past that, there is also in the store another area where you can buy things with real money. That's in the items shop. And that'll have more specifically limited edition skins for both weapons as well as, of course, your cosmetic skin for your character. Also, leaderboards in the main menu where you can check your solos, your duos, your Pardon me, your squads, and then all across, you can sort it by high scores, most experience, most kills, matches once, okay, all those normal things. So that's pretty nifty and pretty awesome. Uh, nicely laid out in the UI for you. And then this is one of my other favorite features that makes this game very unique. Before you jump into game and you hit the play match button, you'll get dropped into a loading area, which you can do one of two things. The first, as you're seeing in here, is it's a gun match. It's essentially gun game from Counter-Strike, but you do it in the loading area. There's even a fun little zero gravity area here. It's nice just because you get the chance to warm yourself up just briefly, but you also get the kind of uh, the go of playing against real players, but also getting a feel for the weapons while you're getting yourself tuned in. Pretty sweet. Now, the other thing, this is also really cool. If you're not one of those people that likes to try hard, you want to try to relax the mind a little bit. There's also this fun little maze pathing area, too, where the weapons are not allowed to be fired. And you can kind of explore and try to get yourself up as far as possible on this little uh, jumping kind of maze game, I guess you could call it. It's pretty fun. Uh, I, I will say the highest I've gotten is past this second stage. And then only a little bit further. It is a little difficult, to be completely honest. And it will give you another little bit of a challenge. But these fun little mini games before you load in really makes it feel uh, very 
very unique for sure, but it also kind of kills the time, so you're not sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. It does force itself after a certain amount of time, and even though we are 50 of 50 in that lobby, it will finish out that full timer. But back to the gameplay, shall we? You'll notice there are a couple of different things as we go up to players that you can do. As you hold tab on dead body, you can see a green plus, which will say you can carry these. A yellow switching sign which says okay I want to switch my current weapon out for what I have and then there's also the little white bars that means you are at max capacity now it's not just loot that you find in the world and off of dead players you might be wondering what about epic and legendary drops there are some of those as you'll notice here a giant beam will drop from the sky and then a little ball will start to come down like it's New Year's Eve in uh, Times Square in New York inside of this ball well you might be wondering what be in there all of the different armor pieces are there for you to pick up. A couple of healths and a couple of weapons, including the Seiko Elite, the Elite Sniper Rifle, which, to my knowledge, does more damage, has a little bit faster reload, I think, um, and better accuracy over range and all the good stuff that you would want. These things are commonly death traps, though, as I learned very quickly in some of my first games in duos the other day. Me and my buddy decided to go for one, and we walked out and met about six different enemies. Uh, elements of people shooting at us from all different kinds of angles uh, but it is definitely worth your while if you can pick it up the damage is very nice it's very hefty uh, but as you go through again the world it is very I, I will say earth-esque there are these different elements of the game that are you know, different areas of the game I should say where the map kind of transpires between kind of a beach area. There's this giant redwoods area, which is really cool. There's a fields and farms area. It's very unique and very dynamic while still being small. And you can see the zone starts to push in. That zone is, uh, the coolest thing about the zone is that A, you can outrun it from just about the furthest extent of it, which is awesome because it forces you to move without actually punishing you. It wants to focus on the gunplay more than just, all right, well, you got caught in the zone, you're dead. But if you do get caught in the zone, it's very difficult to see out of it. And that's kind of the thing that I enjoy the most because it is punishing you, just not in the normal way of, all right, well, you're going to die to it super, super quickly. You will die to it if you stay into it too long, but you can generally outrun them and also heal through them, which brings me to my next point. The healing in this game is extremely awesome. I love everything about it so far. You pick up these little nano pens, and the thing about it is when you take the damage, obviously you start to see your 100% health will start to fall away, but you can move and do everything you can possibly want while you're healing. It's a very quick, it's a burst heal as well. It'll heal you a small one for 50%. Although, the time to kill, again, we'll try to uh, keep you away from that heal. I'm surprised that that guy actually was able to get me after I had sniped him once and hit him again with the AR. But he must have healed up very quickly. And then, of course, the time to kill is very, very low. So you can get punished very quickly. But besides that, the healing is very good. There's no stamina bar, so you can run infinitely. It's a very simplistic game when it comes to the movement mechanics. There is jump crouching, which is cool. The graphics are also pretty unique in the element that they are sci-fi futuristic. But the thing about it is the game is simplistic. You know, there's not a lot of moving environment. There's not a lot of things that really get in the way besides you, your kind of stagnant environment, and your opponent. Can you outgun them or can't you? That seems to be the question more often than not. Or could you possibly just throw a Hail Mary and get your opponent that way? The answer, well, you can see it there is yes. <laughs> but as you go through again, here's my other thing about this game that I really enjoy. There is a training ground mode where you can see all the different weapons are laid out in these tables, and it's an, almost an instant queue. There's no waiting time. You join in it by yourself. You can pick up whatever you want. I decided to pick up the AK and give myself a couple of attachments. And the cool thing about it is, this is the one thing that a lot of Battle Royale games that are more tactical do not have. PUBG attempted this with all those weapons that were on the tables, but there is no real good way to jump into a training ground and practice. So, you have these targets in front of you at different set ranges. You can also see that the hit markers, as you take extra shots, when you hit somebody, the hit indicator will stay on your screen for a while so you can see exactly where your shot went. It's a pretty nifty feature. Now, besides just the fact that you can take down these different targets with a couple of shots here and there, one of the other great things about it is there's this spray wall behind you. And the spray wall will show you the spray pattern of the weapons. How about that? Super awesome feature. I love everything about it. It's definitely something that is needed, I think, in more tactical and shooter-friendly battle royale games. I love it a lot. But here's the thing that I have to say that are negatives about the game. 
The frame rate is not great. I'm on all low settings. I have a 1080 in my system, a Ryzen 7 1700, 16 gigs of RAM, and I'm generally getting somewhere between 70 and 90 FPS, depending on where I am on low settings. So again, like most Battle Royales, it struggles in the optimization department. At least so far, again, this is an early access alpha testing. I'm not sure what buzzword they put on it, but it is early. It's still a testing period. The thing that I don't enjoy about that is obviously, as a streamer, I want to be able to bring out high quality, good looking content. And granted, at low, the content doesn't look terrible by any stretch of the imagination, but it definitely doesn't look great, especially the character models. Some of the animations are a little wonky, some of the in-game models look a little wonky and kind of basic, but generally, the gunplay feels pretty fantastic. It definitely takes some getting used to. It definitely is one of those things that you have to put a lot of time in to kind of get used to how the guns are spraying, getting a used to uh, what they look like when you are holding down left click or when you're trying to find those independent shots from range. It even takes a little bit to figure out where people are. You can see these bullet tracers, which is great. I love that addition. You, the sound effects, the sounds are great. But it can be a little difficult if players don't have shields to see them, which I don't think is a bad thing. It just, again, takes some getting used to. Also, the character models are rather small. So as far as finding yourself aiming and getting into a more hardcore shooting style battle royale, you might struggle for a while. I still am struggling just to find people every now and again on the map and on my screen even. Especially beyond that is trying to find the range and all of where my bullets are going. So it definitely starts to take a trained eye to get used to. But once you start to get the hang of it, I will say the comfort level definitely does pick up. And I am enjoying it exclusively uh, as a, the more hardcore tactical shooter style battle royale game. I think this one will definitely overtake PUBG in my mind. It might not take over the casual mindset for a lot of players, but this one does the trick for the competitive edge for me. So when it comes down to it, $25, is it worth your magic and your mojo and your hard-earned money? I think yes, generally. If you're into getting your butt kicked a little bit and trying to get yourself into a competitive shooter, I think this one is definitely the way to go. So if you want to give it a go, you can find it now on Steam. Of course, make sure you join their Discord as well. Their community team is absolutely incredible when it comes to interacting with their community as a whole. I'll link that in the description below. And until next time, I hope that you guys enjoy yourselves out there, whether it be in the dome, in the realm, or on the battlegrounds. And until next time, I hope that you keep holding it down.